If you're like most people, you have more things to do than time to do it in. This exercise will help you both maintain and improve your left hand technique, your alternate picking and your timing. All in only 5 minutes per day. 5 minutes might not sound like a long time, but it will be quite intense and will make the most out of those minutes. So let's check it out right now. As usual, you have a link to the tabs in the description below and besides the tabs in Guitar Pro and PDF, you also get a MIDI file so you can just import it into your DAW and play along there instead. So in the tab, it's written out in the first position, and the only reason for that is so it matches with the fingering. But the idea is that you're going to move this around the fretboard to different positions on different days. And today I'm going to show it in the fifth position. So first of all, we have to look at our scale, and it's just going to be using fingers 2, 3, 4. And in this case, like I said, we're in the fifth position, so the second finger will then be on the sixth fret, seventh fret, and eighth fret. And we're going to apply that to all six strings like this. So that's the fingering, very easy as you can see. Now the pattern we're going to apply to this one is basically going to be three notes at a time. So it's going to be three and then we're going to go two plus one and then one plus two. And then we'll restart the whole thing on the A string, three, two plus one, one plus two and so on until you end up here with three on the high E string. But within those three notes, we're going to apply a different pattern. So the pattern we're going to apply here is this four note pattern. So instead of just going up one, two, three, we're going to go back as well. We're going to loop it like this. So we go two, three, four, and then back to three. So I'm just calling out the fingering now because like I said, this is movable on the fretboard, but we're in the fifth position now. So two, three, four, three, and that's loop. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we're going to play that in 16th notes, so 4 notes per beat, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to do that 3 times, and then on the 4th beat we're going to stop, or actually it's going to be a quarter note. So you can either stop on that note and cut it off, or you can just do it like I do it in the, in the demonstration here soon, where I'm going to hold the note instead, so it's going to be like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. And then, once you've done that, we move on to the next variation within this fingering, and we're going to apply the loop method here. And if you don't know what the loop method is, I have a video dedicated to that practice method, so you can check that out after you watch this video. So I'm going to link that at the end of this one, and also it's going to be down in the description. Basically what it means is that we have as many variations as we have notes in the actual loop. So we have four notes in this loop, where we can start on the second finger, and end on the second finger, we can start on the third finger. And on the third finger, we can start on the fourth finger. And on the fourth, and then we can start on the third again, because now you're going to go back first as part of the loop. So you go... So that's our variations. If this feels confusing at all, don't worry. Just check out the tabs and play along and you'll get it very quickly. But also check out the loop video, because I go into much more detail there why this is so beneficial. So, like I said, we're going to do this by repeating everything three times and then stopping on the fourth repetition. And since we're doing 16th notes, we're going to be stopping on the fourth beat of each bar. And this is by design, because you could potentially just go on to the next variation and make this a 3-4 kind of exercise. But we don't want to do that, because stopping will also force us to start again. And at this low tempo, 50 BPMs, it's going to be quite tricky to get that in time. So what you want to do is you play the first variation. So you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then you start on the second one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Third one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then the fourth variation, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. After that, we're gonna go to the next variation, which is two plus one. Do the same thing, so we're gonna make it into a loop. And then we have four variations, and each gonna start on a downstroke, and we're gonna do each for three beats and stop on the fourth beat. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. 
Then we go to the last variation before it restarts on the A string. So it's going to be one plus two. Same thing. Just make it into a loop and then apply the, the whole thing of starting on each point of the loop. So. So as you can see, it gets trickier when you have to change strings and especially keeping the timing as accurate as possible. So this is a timing exercise as much as anything else. It's quite challenging to maintain the 16th notes at this low tempo of 50 BPMs. So I rarely get through this without rushing or dragging a bit at some point, but as long as you try your best to keep your focus up, you will improve a little bit each day. So don't get discouraged, just try it out day after day and you will get better and better. But really do focus on the timing aspect of it. Getting good synchronization between the right and left hands is all about the timing. So it's kind of like if we're going to have a meeting and this is you, this is me, and then we need a third party, so to speak, the time that we're going to meet up at. And the metronome and the subdivision in this case is going to supply that timing aspect of it. So by working on this and really focusing on the timing, you're going to find that your synchronization will improve a lot. So I'm just going to demonstrate this now exactly how you should practice it, but I'm not going to do the whole thing because that would be insanely boring, but I'm going to do it all the way through until we start on the A string again. So we're going to do these three, two plus one, one plus two, and then start here again. It's absolutely fine to play along to the practice file at first, but at some point you want to leave all that stuff behind and only rely on the single metronome click. And when you do that, don't use any type of subdivision because that sort of uh, defeats the purpose because you want to be able to feel the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And if you have that going in the background, it's not going to give you the same benefits. So the subdivisions are all about feeling these bigger groups over a steady beat. Highly suggest that when you practice this one to always keep the subdivision going. And what I mean by that is that just count in your head or out loud is even better. Even you might sound a bit strange to your spouse or family, but that's okay. So just count one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. So you see, I keep the counting going even as I stop. And I highly suggest that you try that yourself. So keeping the subdivision going here is nothing more than counting to four on each beat. And I think anyone can do that if they just practice it a bit. And also remember that part of the challenge here is the low tempo. So if you want an even bigger challenge, lower the metronome, don't raise it. Because as you get higher, it's going to be more predictable where the beat's going to fall and you won't have to focus as much. And also, I don't think you're going to get the same synchronization benefits. So please try going lower instead of raising the tempo. I think you have enough stuff where you try to raise the tempo all the time. So now it's your turn. Please try this one exactly as prescribed and then let me know in the comments how everything went. And as always, I have a question for you. How much time do you spend per day practicing technique?